There we go. That was a good bite. Who you at, buddy? Oh, you're just a little guy. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Today, we're gonna talk about one of my favorite baits of all time, and that is the finesse swim bait. Everything I wish someone would have told me about swim bait fishing in today's video, that is not a big one, but hopefully we'll catch some much bigger than that today. It is my all-time favorite bait probably for smallmouth bass, and it catches largemouth and spotted bass as well. So we're gonna break down everything you need to know for smallmouth or for fishing a finesse swim bait in today's video. We're feeling better, we're back on the water, and we got a lot more videos coming up in the near future here. So stay tuned, let's get right into it. All right, so like I said, we're gonna talk about the finesse swim bait in today's video. If you've been watching my channel for any period of time, you know I absolutely love this bait. I throw it nonstop for smallmouth, pretty much from fall all the way through winter into spring, pre-spawn. I've even caught post-spawn bass doing this technique. It's just a technique that catches a ton of fish. I have a ton of confidence in it, and it's really easy to do. So pretty much anybody can get out here and throw this technique right here. By the end of today's video, you'll know everything you need to know on how to do this and catch fish just like we're going to in today's video. I'm actually filming this after the fact, so I have already caught the fish today and we smashed them. So I'm gonna keep this short so you can see me catching a bunch of fish and learn how to use this technique because I already did a video on the setup, how to rig this thing, the gear you need, everything like that. And I'll link that at the end of today's video. So once you're done watching this one, if you wanna go over there and check out a more in-depth video on how to rig this thing up and the gear you need as well, that will be at the end of this video. But I will go slightly over what we're gonna do today's video. So right here is my finesse swim bait setup. I have my other one sitting on the deck right here, but I actually have a Ned rig on it right now. Um, I do use a spinning rod. I've used a spinning rod plenty of times. The only problem with using a spinning rod is sometimes you don't get as good of a hook set because your drag will slip on the hook set. Um, that's just the way a spinning rod works. I don't like to crank the drag down, so I do lose a couple fish going with the spinning rod. I like the bait caster when I can get away with it. It gives me a little bit more power on these fish, and this is like the perfect one right here. So this is a six foot nine, light, medium, heavy. Um, it, a medium power would work as well. Basically anything you'd throw a jerk bait on. That's the same with thing you would want to use for a finesse swim bait. So your jerk bait topwater rod will work perfect. I have a seven one to one gear ratio reel here this is the shimano slx dc it doesn't need to be a dc um, i like the slx's uh, they're cheap and affordable and they work really really well um, and really the drag does not matter because you're going to crank it down i play the fish with the thumb bar anyway um, and then a very important piece of equipment is your line we have 12 pound test fluorocarbon on here it has less diameter than it's like 15 or 17 so it's going to keep your bait down there more and we're going to talk about that in the retrieve um, the bread and butter here of this technique no equipment whatsoever except for this right here. I have a jig head tied straight to my line. I pour these jig heads myself. I've already done a video on it. All this is is a Gamagatsu ball head jig. I put a two aught hook in here and then I just pour quarter ounce, eighth ounce, and three eighths, depends on the water depth. Pretty much quarter ounce will do everything you need to do, fish from like five to 15 foot of water. If I'm fishing deeper than 15 foot, I'm gonna go with the three eighths. If I'm fishing shallower, I'm gonna go with the one eighth, or if I wanna suspend the bait up in the water. I don't do that very often unless the fish are like schooling. Right now, these fish are tucked tight to the bottom, so we're using the quarter to get it down on the bottom, but gently tick the bottom. And again, we're gonna talk about that here shortly. Um, and then my swim bait, I have three different options that I usually go for. The Six Sense Whale, the 3.0 or the 3.5. This one is the one we crushed them on today. This is the Six Sense Divine 3.2, uh, but the 3.8 would work as well. And I've thrown the Kai Tech as well. You guys know I love that one too. Um, I just work with Six Sense. So I do still throw the Kai Tech, but these are awesome as well. I actually have used these. I put them to the test. They do work. I'm not just trying to sell you something. And if you'd like to support the channel, you can go ahead and use my code QUINCE at checkout. You'll save 10% on your order on anything off of that Sixth Sense website. But that is the setup. Um, when it comes to colors, I really don't do much with my colors. I got two options here that I pretty much throw. Today we were throwing Pro Blue, that's what we caught a lot of our fish on. The water's a little bit clearer than it usually is here. Um, so the Pro Blue caught them pretty good. And then anything white, this is the Ghost Ice Minnow, um, but a Pearl White, anything like that would catch them as well if the water's a little bit dirtier. So that's all I really have. Like I said, my spinning rod setup is pretty basic. It's just a seven foot medium spinning rod with 15 pound braid to an eight pound fluorocarbon leader. And then I would just tie the same jig head 
and swim bait combo on there. Um, so like I said, if you want to see more details on this, there's a few different tricks I do to make these baits last longer and do stuff like that. That'll be at the end of the video, but for now, let's jump up on the front deck, let's catch some fish, and let's show you how to fish this thing, uh, catching some big smallmouth bass. So now that we touched a little bit on the gear you need to throw this bait, like I said, the other video will be linked at the end of this one if you want to check it out in more depth. We're going to go ahead and show you how to throw this thing around, and that's the more important part with this setup. Like I said, I keep my setup really simple here. Pretty much any bait caster or spinning rod will do, and a basic swim bait. It's nothing fancy, but the technique is more important. Um, all we're doing right now is fishing a river for smallmouth, so we're looking for areas that'll break the current. We're fishing a rock pile right here. I have it lined up right in front of me. And the most important thing is you wanna make this thing look natural like a bait fish struggling and making its way down the river trying to stay alive. So we're gonna throw this thing up current. You always wanna fish this up current if you're fishing it in a river. If not, you can use the wind direction to base where you wanna cast. You just want it to make it look like it's dying and coming with the current wind, What? whatever you got. So right here, we're gonna throw out on this rock pile here. The most important part is to make a very long cast uh, because you can get bit from here to there, anywhere in between, um, especially if you fish this bait like I always do. So I'm gonna let this sink all the way down to the bottom. Once I see my line lay slack on the bottom, I'm just gonna start. Oh, that one ate it on the bottom. Sometimes they'll eat it. What they'll do is they'll follow it down and they'll look at it. And as soon as you start your reel, they'll grab that bait. So that one did that. I ended up missing him. I set the hook way too early, which we'll talk about in the hook set here. A uh, little jumpy and excited to catch some more fish here. So I'm just gonna slowly roll this thing down the rocks and you just want it slowly. There's one right there. You just want it slowly ticking along the bottom. And as it's bumping the bottom, that's when they're gonna grab it. And just like that. So decent one right here. We're gonna go ahead and flip him in and we'll show you a little bit more here. So there's one right there. Like I said, we're fishing for smallmouth today, but I've caught largemouth and especially spotted bass. Spotted bass love this technique as well, but I have even caught largemouth on this. That's not a bad one there. We're gonna go ahead and throw her back. We're gonna try and catch us another one. So as I mentioned, you just want that bait bouncing slowly along the bottom, especially in this colder water. We're fishing 50 degree water today. Um, so I, I want that thing bouncing along the bottom. If it leaves the bottom, what I'll do is when I'll be reeling, I, every once in a while I'll check myself. So I'll start reeling like this and I'll give it 10, 12 cranks and then I'll kill it. And if my line starts going out, I know my bait has left the bottom. I'll let it go right back down. Just stop your retrieve just like that. And then I'll start winding again slowly. And there's another one. And they will pound this thing. I mean, they hit it hard. It is a good bite. You will know when they get it. Um, and we're going to talk about the hook set after I land this guy right here to make sure you can land as many fish as possible. The nice thing is it's a single hook bait. They usually choke this thing just like this guy did right here. You can see that thing is gone. So they'll usually choke that bait uh, and they're not going to come off on a single hook bait like that. I think I lost one fish today um, that I actually had hooked and got up off the bottom. Sometimes you just won't get them hooked part of it they'll eat it they'll miss they'll bite the tail whatever and we're going to talk about that just right now so the reason the hook set is so important on this bait is because you need to get that light wire hook penetrated through usually it doesn't take a lot of force i'm setting the hook pretty hard on them i actually don't even need to be doing that um, usually i just reel right into the fish but the key is these fish instead of them the bait coming towards them and they come and get it straight ahead what they're going to do is they're going to turn around and track that bait down the current they don't always commit to it right away. So when they're tracking that bait, they're swimming towards you. And a lot of times they'll follow it for a good ways before they actually get the bait. I got one already. I was just letting that lay on the bottom and I caught one. Um, but what'll happen is they'll track that bait towards you. And as they swim towards you and track that bait, they're gonna eat it and push it towards you. And you're gonna feel that hard thump when they suck that bait in because they're gonna vacuum effect, kind of suck and overtake that bait and swim towards you you'll feel that really hard thump of them biting it. And then what'll happen is your line will just go slack like you lost the fish. That fish still has that bait in its mouth. It's just swimming straight at you. So instead of when you feel that thump, what you saw on the first one that I missed, as soon as I felt that thump, I whacked on it as hard as I could. You don't wanna do that. You wanna just keep winding when you feel that thump, keep reeling towards you, 
and you'll feel your rod kind of load up just a little bit, that's when you can sweep into them or you can just keep reeling and keep that pressure and that light wire hook will go right through their face. And another really important part is your line diameter. There's another one right there. They're loaded on this spot. Your line diameter is really important. That's why I only have 12 pound test on here. Or if I use a spinning reel, I'll use 15 pound braid and then like eight pound test fluorocarbon or just straight eight pound test fluorocarbon. You wanna go really light on your line. Another good one right there. Um, but you can see because of that light line, I can keep my bait down on the bottom more. What will happen is if you go with 15 or even 17 pound test to try and horse these fish or have more abrasion resistance, I just retie more because I'm hitting these rocks. But if you have something that has more abrasion resistance, it'll be thicker and that has more lift in it. So when you're reeling your bait in, it's going to come off the bottom a lot easier. It's going to be easier to keep your bait on the bottom if you go with a lighter pound test it'll stay down there in the strike zone longer and you'll get more bites because of it and ultimately just play around with this technique try different swim baits try different jig heads ultimately i like that really basic lead jig head that's my favorite one and i go through a ton of these so i like to pour them cheaply um, and then the swim bait i do vary my swim bait a lot i throw the kytex i throw the whale uh, from six cents i throw right now i'm throwing a six cents divine swim bait i try to mix it up a little bit color or shape a lot of times they'll have different actions based on the swim bait that you're throwing. So this Divine has a really tight wiggle to it. And when the water's cold, that works great. You'll get a lot of bites because of that very tight wiggle. Um, where if you throw something that has a little more wobble, like that uh, six Sense Whale, you might not get as many fish because it might be a little too aggressive of an action for the temperature of water. Um, but it's really a technique that will work all year round if you wanted it to. It's my favorite in the colder water temps i'll throw i'll start throwing it in the northeast here i start throwing it in about september late september early october and i'll throw it all the way through may even june some years um, all the way through the winter as long as there's no ice i'm throwing this bait it's one that'll catch them no matter how cold the water gets it's just such a subtle presentation and it just always gets bites so it's one of my favorite ways to absolutely catch these fish uh, especially smallmouth smallmouth they're like addicted to this thing they love it You'll catch a ton of smallmouth doing this, uh, but I've caught plenty of other types of fish as well. Uh, it's just a great technique to catch a bunch of fish. There's another one. You can see that fish bit it, and then it kind of swam towards me a little bit. I just kept reeling maybe one crank and then leaned into them, and I kind of just swing my rod all the way around the side, and then that pegs them pretty good, and they do not come off. Um, this actually feels like a big one. Oh, it is a big one. Yeah, that's a big one. That's a good one. Another important thing is how I'm rigging this bait up. And like I said, if you want to check that video out, it's going to be here in just a second. Um, the way I'm rigging this bait up, I've used one swim bait for all of these fish throughout today's video. Come on, buddy. There we go. You can see that thing choked it. That swim bait finally gave up there. I could probably still get another fish out of it if I really wanted to. She was not coming off, but like I said, the way I rigged this thing up, I have used one swim bait and I've caught probably six or seven fish throughout the course of this video. Such an awesome technique. One of my favorite ways to catch big small mouth like this. And I hope you enjoyed today's video. Grab yourself some jig heads, grab yourself some swim baits and get out there and catch some fish just like this if you want to see that rigging video go ahead and check this one out right here make sure you hit that subscribe button down below so you don't miss any more of my fishing videos coming up thanks for watching